Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. After today's conversation, you may not eat bread again. <laughs> now, I know that sounds crazy because, you know, most people love bread. As a matter of fact, when you go out to restaurants today, one of the first things they give you is bread and water, and they do that for a reason. Okay, that makes you not only eat more, but it actually makes you want to drink more as well, too. So bread has become a very integral part of eating today, dining. You know, typically when we have a meal, we're trying to figure out, well, what bread are we going to eat with it? And so I know that it's very integral to how we eat in our culture today. And I also know that for thousands of years, our ancestors ate bread as a main staple. As a matter of fact, you can go back as early as 8,000 years ago, and this is one of the first place you see humans uh, make bread, okay? And it was in the form of like little chapatis or if you, you know, like a tortilla. So that was the first time we made bread 8,000 years ago. But what I'm going to explain to you today, the bread, the wheat that our ancestors were eating 8,000, 2,000 years ago, is nothing like what we're eating today. And this is why so many people are sick today because we eat so much bread, okay? We eat so much wheat. We eat so much white flour. That white flour is what's making the bread, of course, okay? And one of the personal experiences that I had was I spent a lot of time in Italy. And spending time in Italy, which has one of the five blue zones, by the way, uh, what I noticed was that all these people were eating a lot of pasta, a lot of bread, but you didn't see a lot of overweight people there. And it just baffled me because like, that's one of the things we know when you eat a lot of bread, a lot of pasta, it is going to put weight on you and weight in places you do not want to have weight. And so as I'm in Italy trying to figure out why is it they're able to eat so much pasta and bread and not have any problems, I mean, I mean, and gorgeous. And what I came to know and understand was, again, the wheat that we're eating, especially here in the U.S., compared to other countries. And you'll, I'll talk a little bit about it as we move toward the end. The amount of chemicals and additives and things that they're putting in bread in the U.S., which are banned in other countries, is why we're getting so overweight as a result of eating breads, pastas, cookies, cakes, pies, things of that nature. And so the wheat here is very different. And I'm going to explain why and how it's very different. And then I'm going to get into eight reasons why or eight chemicals that are in bread that are causing you to not only get overweight and sick, but are increasing your risk for cancer as well too. So stay tuned to the end. And I'm also gonna give you a solution to the problem as well too, if you still wanna eat bread occasionally, okay? So let's go back to why American wheat is so dangerous, okay? And this is also becoming a problem in other countries as well, too. But the good thing in places like Europe and other countries, many of the chemicals that I'm going to name a little bit later are banned. OK, so you never see them in the bread. All right. Now, what happened to wheat to be able to make bread today here? Well, what happened was and this was really a trickle effect as a result of the ending of World War Two. OK. The ending of World War II ruined the entire food industry in America. It ruined food. It ruined the nutrition of Americans. That was the beginning of the end, and that was the beginning of nutritional diseases. If you go back prior to World War I, which means that you got to go back to the 1930s uh, and 20s, okay? You know, uh, the ending of World War II and uh, the 40s or what have you, what you see is all of the technology that was being used primarily as warfare in World War II was then taken and given to industries. And one of those industries was the food industry, okay? 
A lot of that technology got spread out. A lot of things that were left over in abundance were then given out and people were trying to figure out how to make use of these things. So you see things like, you see industries that are having issues with having this backlog and abundance of fluoride, which was a toxic product. And they were trying to figure out how to get rid of all this fluoride. And you know what they decided to do? Put it in the tap water, put it in dentistry, okay? But prior to, it was always considered a toxin. Well, it's no different with the food industry and what happened in the food industry, but also what happened with wheat as well too. Prior to the 1950s, wheat wasn't hybridized the way it is today. But as a result of what was called the Green Revolution, and I use air quotes because the Green Revolution wasn't what you think thought it was. It wasn't this evolution of go eat plants, go eat greens. Part of that revolution was there was an abundance of nitrogen after World War II. And they were trying to figure out to do with all this nitrogen that, that was left over in abundance. And one of the things that they decided to do with it was spread it out all over the place in the wheat fields to use as fertilizer. Okay. Now in the process, they learned a few things. Okay. As a result of spreading out all of this nitrogen in the wheat fields, the head of the actual wheat became gigantic and it became so big and heavy that the wheat would then tilt over. Now, if you, I wasn't able to see it, but if you were to go back to wheat fields or go to other countries and see wheat fields, Wheat is like six feet tall, okay? So it comes up to like here to me, okay? So wheat is like six feet tall when it's the original wheat. wheat. Now, when they did this, they added all of this, you know, nitrogen to the field and it caused the wheat to be so heavy. All of a sudden, the, the head of the wheat is so heavy that it leans over. It made it very difficult to harvest the wheat. Now, they're trying to figure out I love the fact that the wheat is big and I'm getting a better yield, but now they got to figure out how do we make it easier where it's not so tall and it doesn't bend over and it makes it difficult to harvest. So what they decided to, to do, again, man entering into the entering into nature, trying to perfect something that is already perfect, they decided to cross the wheat or hybridize the wheat and they decided to hybridize the wheat with a Japanese goat weed, okay? A Japanese goat grass to be specifically, and it was a dwarf Japanese goat grass. As a result, this made the wheat plant shorter, stockier, okay? So it literally went from being six, six feet tall to two feet tall. So this is how we get dwarf wheat today. Now this created a few issues, and this is what's gonna lead us to into why our wheat and bread here is so dangerous. The first thing it is, it's important to know and understand that when you hybridize something, it is not necessarily on the same page as genetically modifying something, but that's a whole nother video. But when you hybridize something, you can't predict what will happen in nature as a result of crossing something with something that would have never crossed in nature, okay? And as a result, now what happens is the plant is shorter. It went from six feet tall to two feet tall. But also this new hybridized plant lacked a leafy canopy. See, before there was a there's a leafy canopy to, to in some ways protect the wheat. And what is it protecting it from? Weeds and insects. Okay? So now you don't have this leafy canopy in this new plant because it was cr crossed with a dwarf Japanese goat grass, and now it's smaller and the leaves don't provide that canopy. So now it's more exposed to insects. Now it's more exposed to, you know, weeds, okay? And as a result of that, now it makes it very difficult, even though like you get more of it, it's more difficult to harvest because there's weeds everywhere and there's insects everywhere eating it, all right? This means that now you gotta use herbicides. Herbicides get rid of weeds, okay? And now you have to use insecticides. Insecticides get rid of set insects. 
okay? And pesticides, which get rid of rodents. So now the wheat is being sprayed with herbicides, insecticides, and pesticides. When you eat the wheat, you're also eating that. So that was a huge issue. Now with this new process or this new form of hybridized wheat, now they're not using their old traditional practices of rotating crops anymore, okay? Now they're just simply monocropping. They, they're putting the same crop down every year, not rotating. It's important to rotate crops because when you put a new crop in there, you get a, a totally different requirement of that plant. That plant may need more nitrogen. The other plant may need more potassium. One plant may bring this type of uh, bacteria to the soil. Another plant brings this type. It creates diversity in the soil when you're rotating crops. But now they're monocropping. They're not rotating the crops anymore. This depletes the soil. When the soil is depleted, guess what? The plant is going to be depleted. So now that wheat that used to be semi-healthy isn't as, isn't as healthy anymore. And here's the other thing about hybridized wheat compared to nature's wheat. Hybridized wheat will not grow without men. You have to literally be present in the process for it to go. That tells you that it's not a natural thing. Okay. Now, I, we, all, we can argue back and forth because I know there's a lot of farmers out there that says, Men have been cultivating plants for 10,000s of years, but it's important to know and understand that plants have been on this earth since the beginning of time, which is millions of years. So something that is natural will naturally grow without any intervention of man. Okay? So that's why I'm, I'm making that distinction because I, before people get in the comments, I think it's important to, for people to know that. So this new modern wheat will not grow without man. It will not grow from its own seed. It has to be replanted every year. So keep all of that in mind as I go through all of these chemicals that are now inbred, but it started with this process, the hybridization of wheat in the 1950s, which changed. It's not the wheat that our ancestors were eating. It's nothing near that, okay? It's nothing near that in terms of nutrition. It's nothing near that in terms of what the original plant was, okay? So hugely important. So let's get into these chemicals that are now in the bread. Uh, I'm gonna talk about eight of them, but there are many more, all right? So the first one is potassium bromate, all right? Potassium bromate is often put in bread because it's there to strengthen the dough and increase the bread ability to rise, okay? But there's always a cost when you use a chemical. Okay, just like there's no drug without a side effect, there's no chemical without a side effect. So if you put a chemical like potassium bromate in your bread, it increases your risk for cancer. It's linked to cancer. It's banned in 30 plus countries. It's actually banned in California. For those of you who live in California, you know that California is much more stricter when it comes to agriculture and um you know, supplements and things of that nature. So California has banned potassium bromate for the entire state. Meanwhile, the FDA has approved it. This is why I'm always telling you guys, it's important for you to know just because something is on the, sh the shelf, Food and Drug Administration, so food, just because food is on the shelf, it does not mean that it's safe, okay? Banned in 30 plus countries, banned in California, approved by the FDA. Okay, potassium bromate. So that's one thing that is increasing your risk for cancer every time you eat bread. Okay, because the vast majority of wheat, unless they tell you it is original wheat, and I'll get into what original wheat is, it is more than likely in the U.S. going to be hybridized wheat. Okay, so that's the first thing, potassium bromate. Number two, the number two uh, chemical that is in bread got a lot of flat especially with the company Subway, okay? Because they put it in their bread. This chemical is called azodicarbonamide, okay? Azodicarbonamide. Now, the name should tell you that it's not good, okay? To hear something that long and that confusing, if you see that, well, you're probably, in many cases, 
won't even see it in the ingredients. So that's the really sad thing. But they put this chemical in bread because it, again, for the dough texture and the dough strength. Okay? But here's the thing about this chemical. As it's going through the processing, okay, this chemical breaks down and creates other chemicals. Okay? And the unfortunate thing about these chemicals is that it's been shown to cause tumors in rats. This is why... Subway got all of the flack about this chemical. And then a lot of subways uh, got banned in Europe because of these, actually this chemical and the potassium bromate that I mentioned before. So again, banned in 30 other countries, approved by the FDA in the USA, okay? So that's the second chemical that is in bread that is killing your health, causing you to be overweight, okay? causing diabetes, inflammation in the body, etc. Okay? Number 2, azodicarbonamide. Okay? Number 3, parsley hyd hydrogenated oils. Parsley hydrogenated oils. Now, you're probably saying, what is that? Well, when you see those oils that are in breads that they're using in breads, quite often they're also genetically modified as well, too which means that they're gonna come with a whole host of other chemicals as well too. Not only the chemicals in terms of pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides, but also chemicals in the processing or refining process as well too, like hexanes, okay? But these partially hydrogenated oils are put in bread because they make the bread resistant to oxidation and spoiling. Now here's the thing, you really need to understand, again, most scientists don't understand nature and its connection to the body. But one of the laws of nature is nothing. All, well, for all things have cycles and nothing is made to live forever, including us. Everything has a process. Even in our bodies, we have what's called cell program death or apoptosis. Well, when a cell gets to a certain level of degeneration, it will automatically be programmed to die, okay? To be taken out, okay? So nothing in nature is made to live forever, okay? Back in the days, you'll notice that when you bought a, a loaf of bread, it used to spoil. Now you'll notice that the breads don't spoil anymore. You've seen a lot of commercials where you'll see, for instance, McDonald's, McDonald's, uh, a McDonald's meal back in the day, like somebody bought it like 20 years ago and it's still there. Like it still looks almost exactly the same as it did when they, the person originally brought it just looks dehydrated. Okay. That means that it's not broken down. Same thing with Chick-fil-A. You saw a lot of those, you know, um, uh, memes and videos where people took their Chick-fil-A and put it on the side, put it inside of a box, never spoiled. The bread never spoiled. The chicken never spoiled or went bad. No fungus came for it. No bacteria come, came for it. Listen, in nature, when something dies, bacteria, fungus come, okay? When we die, that's exactly what happens. When a plant dies, that's exact, exactly what happens. So when something like bread, doesn't spoil, that's a very bad thing. Partially dehydrogenated oils are a very bad thing. And why is that? Because these partially hydrogenated oils are converted into trans fats in the body. Trans fats are banned, not only in Europe, but trans fats are banned in the US. They were banned in 2020. But you'll still find traces of them still in food today. And these partially hydrogenated oils get converted into trans fat. These trans fats cause damage to the lining of the arteries. They also cause increased inflammation all over the body. Okay. They also lead to diabetes, obesity, etc. Okay. So if you're one of those people who always wake up and they feel stiff and they feel inf and you feel inflamed. It could be because you're constantly eating these partially hydrogenated oils in the breads and everything in basically all processed foods that you're consuming. Okay. But again, 
These are, a, it's literally a chemical that is always present in bread unless you're buying bread consciously, okay? Number four, caramel coloring. Just, be said, just because it says caramel does not mean that it comes from caramel. <laughs> they use this because during the process of making bread, bread is bleached. That's why it's so white. And to add some coloring so that it could look almost kind of like something that we could eat instead of like a white sheet of paper, they add this caramel coloring into it. Okay. Now, what's important to understand is that, again, a lot of times when you put these chemicals in the bread, the, the processing of the bread and the cooking of the bread creates the dangerous pro, uh, byproducts. And in this case, these byproducts are linked to cancer as well, too. So another chemical in the bread that increases your risk for cancer. Okay. Number five, high fructose corn syrup and other sweeteners. Most bread has sugar in it. Okay. They said that one slice of bread could contain as many as four teaspoons of sugar four teaspoons, just one slice of bread, all right? So imagine if you ate two slices, that's eight teaspoons. But imagine if you did that two or three times a day, okay? The amount of sugar that you're getting into your body, all right? Not to mention high fructose corn syrup. I need to do a video strictly on that because high fructose corn syrup isn't what it sounds like, okay? It doesn't come from a natural corn, even though it says high fructose corn syrup, it is a synthetic made up product that is littered with dangerous chemicals and does a number on our digestive system. It does a number on our endocrine system, does a number on our blood sugar, and is one of the major contributors to obesity and childhood obesity at that. And this is why so many kids today are having problems with ADD and ADHD, okay? This is a synthetic sweetener, along with other sweeteners that they're putting in the bread as well too, all right? So this increases the blood sugar, which increases your risk for diabetes, which also increases your insulin resistance. This also increases triglycerides in the body as well too, which could lead later on to a heart attack, which also could lead to fatty liver disease. So if you consume a lot of bread, a lot of high fructose corn syrup, it's going to create these tri triglycerides that are going to cause the liver to be fatty. It also increases obesity and it also increases the risk for heart disease. Okay, so hugely important. Another chemical, and the reason why I'm calling it a chemical is because high fructose corn syrup, and many of the other sweeteners are unnatural sweeteners, okay? They're not natural at all, so they're chemicals, all right? Number six, number six is gluten. Number six is, is gluten. And this one is hugely important because most people are under the impression, unless they have celiac disease, they don't really have any concern with gluten. Well, what is really important to understand is that when I was talking about how wheat became hybridized here in the U.S., what I didn't tell you is that as a result of that hybridization, the concentration of gluten in wheat went up exponentially. So it's far more gluten in the wheat that is being eaten today, that hybridized wheat that I ate your ancestors was eating. And now let me explain to you what's so dangerous about gluten even if you don't have celiac disease or you don't have, you know, uh, an allergy to gluten. Gluten creates a compound called zonulin. Z in your gut, your gut is made like this, tight junctions. Only nutrients are supposed to get through. No chunks of food. That's the only thing that's supposed to, supposed to cross over that gut barrier. So the gut is very tight because the gut has the job of protecting whatever's in the bowels from getting into the bloodstream. Could you imagine if feces or food, wasted food or fermented or rotten food got into our bloodstream? 
that would be pretty dangerous. You would become septic and die very quickly. So the gut is protecting you from that. All right. With these tight junctions that you see here. Okay. All right. So just imagine that's the lining of the gut, tight junctions, and only micro particles can get, micro substances can get through like vitamins, minerals, trace elements, amino acids, you know, things of that nature. Well, when you start eating a lot of gluten, that compound zonulin that is created from gluten causes these tight junctions to become loose. And now you're getting chunks of food, food particles going across that gut barrier into the bloodstream. You know what that does? Causes the immune system to go crazy, become hyperactive. It causes the gut to be inflamed, gluten. Okay, so the intestinal lining of the gut becomes inflamed. You become fatigued because the immune system is constantly overworking. So you now you have chronic fatigue and you're tired all the time. You're constantly bloated. You're constantly constipated. <laughs> you, you have an increased risk for autoimmune diseases. Because as I told you, now that you're getting these food particles coming across the gut barrier, it's causing the immune system to become hyperactive. Now the immune system is overacting to food particles and all kinds of things that are coming across that shouldn't be coming across. At some point, it starts to react like that to its own tissues. So now you get an autoimmune disease in the blood and we call it lupus, or you get an autoimmune disease in the nervous system and we call it multiple sclerosis. Okay, but it also damages the microbiome in the gut as well too. So it's hugely important to understand that you're going to have gluten in wheat, okay? But you're gonna have a massive amount in the hybridized wheat that is being consumed here in the US today, okay? So gluten is a chemical, okay? Because now at this point, you're getting doses of gluten at a level that the human body has never seen. And in my opinion, wheat is really made for rodents. It's really not what we should be eating. Is what we can eat when it's in its original form, but wheat is really for what rodents, okay? They have the digestive system to break that down, okay? But gluten on any level, whether you have celiac disease or not, on any level will inflame the gut, okay? Number seven is the pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides that I mentioned before. This type of wheat is going to be highly sprayed. It has to be because as I mentioned before, that leafy canopy that used to protect that wheat from weeds and protect that wheat from other insects is no longer there because now you have a six foot, you know, wheat plant that's now a dwarf two foot plant, which means that it's lower to the ground, easier for insects to get to. You have to spray it more with more pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides. And guess what? Now more rodents could get to it too because instead of it being six foot, so it's difficult for those rodents to get to it. Now it's right here at two feet. So that those the wheat is going to be highly sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides. And many of them are endocrine disrupting pesticides and herbicides and, and insecticides, which means that it's going to highly disrupt your hormonal system, both in men and women. Okay. And then the last one, number eight. Okay. The last one, number eight is all of the chemicals that you get from the processing of wheat. There's a, there's a process that is involved with producing wheat called the Malheur reaction process, okay? And what happens during this process is that it, pro it produces carcinogenic esters. And these esters, for example, are things like acrylamide and furans. And what happens is they're they're put in the process because those things are responsible for the aroma of bread. Have you ever been walking or passing by a place that is making bread and you can smell it from the car? Well, that this is where it's coming from. It's coming from chemicals in most cases, especially here in the U.S. As a matter of fact, if you are familiar with Subway, you know that when you walk by a Subway, you can instantly smell that bread. Well, this is another one of those chemicals that is in the bread and it's pit, put there to create that aroma that brings you into the store to get the bread as well too. All right, so those are the eight chemicals. The eight chemicals that 
probably is why you probably shouldn't or probably won't want to eat bread anymore. Now, let me give you a tip. If you're going to have bread, get the most original form of wheat, which is called in corn, in corn wheat. OK, and I'm, I'm going to say this and it's going to be a little bit controversial because I know that when you look at the alkaline list for Dr. Sabi, spelt is on there. But it's important for you to know that I know that there, there's not supposed to be any uh, hybrids on the list, but spelt is a hybrid and spelt does have gluten in it. OK, so it's important to know if you want to if you want to eat bread then eat the original form, which is in corn, okay? So I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you're not cursing me out at this point. I hope that you share this information with somebody you love and care about so that we can get this message out. This is a community and a grassroots community, and we win when we share information that shifts and changes and breaks generational curses, like health curses, okay? And, you know, generational health Curses like diabetes, hypertension, you know, cancer, heart disease, etc. So spread the information, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Until the next time, peace and blessings, and Godspeed.